So if you just go to Yahoo Finance, so this is uk.finance.yahoo.com, you can just download the historical prices. So what we're trying to do here is look at the S&P index. Now you could type in whatever share you're looking for and you'd have a you'd be able to do the same thing with that. And then we just click on historical prices. And then we can just download what the prices for the S&P has been during that time period. So this is the complete set from 1950 till today. And if you wanted the weekly or monthly, you could do that as well. So I'll just click get prices and then we'll jump over to Excel where we get to play around with it. Actually that just gets the prices so we can see them below here. To get them onto the spreadsheet we just click on the link at the bottom of the page. So download, download to spreadsheet. So with our data which we just downloaded from Yahoo we have the open close high and low prices for every day for the last 50 60 years so what we want to look at is the distribution of changes in the share price or in the value of the index in particular we want to see is the log normal model reasonable? I mean, does the data match well or how well does it match with what we actually see? And we should have the tools within Excel to let us do that. To help us do that kind of analysis. So I'm gonna look at the closing price. I'll call the change delta. So today's price or closing price is E2 and yesterday's price was E3. So today the price was minus 14.75. That was the change in the value of the S&P. Now using the wonders of spreadsheets I'm going to just press shift control end So just check that's 0 0.86 yeah that was a very small change that was down by 21 it was 26 yeah so this seems to be it seems to have filled in cor correctly you know the uh, deltas are match with the change in the closing price. So then I want to save that. So then I want to use the histogram function to graphically see the frequency distribution of 
these changes. So it has a odd way of working. So I just enter in the, di the different um, bins. I'll just put in 10 for example. So then I just go to data analysis, histogram, OK. Then the input range, well I want I1, well I'll say I2 since the first one is a label. I could click labels and started at I1 but doesn't really matter uh, okay that didn't work um how many rows are there okay i'll, I'll just manually check that so cancel cancel if i go drag this down to the bottom Okay, so it's sixteen four six eight eight. Sixteen four six eight. bin range is just going to be th or is this going to be this so I just highlight these bins so I could have done K2 to S2 um, I'll just click chart output and fingers crossed boom okay so they all occurred pretty much in the middle or we can look at it at the table so there are seven nearly eight thousand events between minus 50 and 0 and 8,000 events between 50 and 0. So it's very clustered along the middle. Now what I gained from this was okay here's how you create histograms in Excel. There's, there are probably other ways what I did wrong probably here is that I looked at data from you know was it 1950 so basically 
the S and P is worth about is worth or is at two thousand at the moment, but for most of history it was a lot lower. So, you know, fifty nowadays well actually fifty nowadays is still actually a big move. I normally think of it as being twenty thousand while the value is actually two thousand. Um so basically the units that are used here were bad. I mean, you know, you're not you're not going to have minus two hundred days very often. In fact, I would have expected a couple here because you know, in the two thousand seven eight crash, there were days that it fell by three hundred. But so I need to fiddle around a bit to get the correct thing, the appropriate thing. So what I would say is reduce these bins because the resolution is very poor. So what I'll just do that now since it should be simple enough. So I'll click here's the table. Now I'm I'm just going to make this minus 50 because we saw before the vast bulk of things were clustered in the middle. In fact, I'm going to go minus 5, minus 10, Okay, so I'm I'm just in reducing the size of the bins, increasing my resolution because basically I, I'd the cho choice had been poor there, and do data analysis again. Click on histogram. So it's the same settings as before, but now hopefully it'll read in the change things and recompute. That are so now at least, so it's still largely clustered in the center, but at least you know there's some variation. So I'd say you want a even finer resolution, and then then things might be more relevant. So I'll go back to table. Now what I'll do. So I used autofill. To get minus 100 to 100. So now I just do data analysis. Histogram. But now what I'm going to do is. Not K2. I'll do K. Yeah I'll do. K2. To. Where does that one end? I should K two O two. So now we have a well now we have basically better resolution. I'll zoom that out. 
and now it's more what I was looking for. So we can see the we can see a kind of distribution like shape. So this was supposed to be something like a normal distribution. But if you'd been paying attention, and to be fair, you'd have to be paying good attention, and this should have been slicker. You know, it shouldn't have taken as long to create this as it did. But this is kind of like what we expected. Because share prices are log normally distributed. So delta shouldn't, the delta of interest isn't just the change in the share price. It should be divided by the share price. So we'll do that next. At least now we know how to create these plots. And then we'll be hoping that it does look like a normal distribution. Because this is far too concentrated in the middle. You know, most of the data points occur in the middle. I fiddled around a bit. And the main thing was to switch to log. Now you can also do the change in share price divided by the share price. So you take the previous day's closing price, that's E3 in this case, and you divide the d delta, the, the closing price today minus the closing price yesterday by that. So then you scale, you know, you're scaling the delta by the share price. Because, you know, particularly since we're looking at a large data set, at the start, the S&P was worth a lot less than it is today. You'd expect that even from uh, inflation. So the relevant thing for us is the percentage change, the relative change. So then if we look at log of the share price, log of the closing price today, and you subtract log of the closing price yesterday, so that's J, and do that for all the various days, then we can plot the histogram and see what that looks like. Now there, I messed around a little bit because what happened there was before we had all the events happened essentially right in the middle, while a normal distribution is more spread out. So what I did here was I shrunk, I zoomed in on the middle bit, because a normal distribution doesn't have a hard end. It, the tail in both directions goes on and on and on. So even with the normal distribution, say with a mean of zero and standard deviation one, you could have an event where it's equal to a million. It's very unlikely, but you could. So, but if you zoom in on the middle bit, that is what we expect. You know, we might get a more normal-like distribution. So when we do that, we get that, uh, which is far more normal-like. Now there's a bit of a peak, mini peak at the ends. Well, that's because 
the way we did it or I did it um, I counted everything beyond that event and clumped them all into the final bin likewise here so anything which was large anything larger than 0 0.01 was clumped in there and as I said we could have very rare events where you get like 0.5 or 0 0.02 bigger numbers so we expect it to get these towers to get shorter and shorter but in this final one we've added loads of very short towers to end up with a slightly taller one here it's not ideally if it was a normal distribution I would have wanted it to be more symmetric so that the middle one is it should be spiked at the middle but I wouldn't be surprised if it was little technical things here this looks far more like a normal distribution and I can kind of feel that okay the basic model is okay what I'm actually going to do to finally finish up on this little quick look on whether you know what does the data actually look like because that is our that's rea that's our window into reality so here I'm saying okay it it does look somewhat like a normal distribution but mathematically and this is for the quant channel um, we'd like to maybe do a numerical test so I want to finish up on this quick look at the data and see does it pass the chi-square test there's also the kolmogorov smirnov I haven't done this for a long time but you know there, there are multiple tests for for checking whether data comes from a distribution first of all you'd want to get the quick and easy there wasn't that quick uh, to get to get the plot to see whether this is at all you know you can write it off straight away from the plot then with the chi-square test we can kind of say okay the level it, it, it actually is an extremely good fit it's 99 percent likely to come from a chi from a normal distribution maybe it's only 70 percent likely or something so we'll just finish up by applying a chi-square test to this data to see whether it this is distributed normally and again we can do this because Excel is packed full of exactly the tools that we need we're able to call a vast array of numerical functions which are already built in and we can even code in our own functions